there lived three sincere disciples who uh, who decided to embark their journey on spiritual path so they felt they need a guru a genuine guru so they approached one enlightened master so these three disciples when they met the guru the guru in order to know their sincerity i mean disciple sincerity how much sincere they are and what's their understanding so uh, he gave each disciple a pigeon and then he asked you all three go to different directions and uh, you have to kill this pigeon but uh, on one condition that uh, you have to ensure no one is aware and no one will come to know while you are killing the pigeon so these three disciples they took the pigeon and they went in different directions so one disciple he went uh, under a tree in a forest and he saw that there are no human beings so he he uh, he killed the pigeon with some sharp uh, object uh, another disciple he he went into certain certain uh, cave and then he he saw that you know no one is watching him then he took the pigeon and he he also killed the pigeon the third disciple and these two disciples uh, returned to their master and they they explained uh, how they killed the pigeon now the guru was waiting for the third disciple and the third disciple uh, could not return for for a few days so uh, the master you know uh, he smiled and he he <laughs> he asked these two disciples to go and uh, find where is where is your third friend and uh, upon searching for this friend these two two friends two disciples they saw the friend sitting under a certain tree in you now in deep silence with closed eyes they could see he he was in great peace so uh, this these two friends you know uh, they were awestruck and then they uh, went back to the guru and they explained to him that you know their friend is sitting in some deep silence in some meditation sort of and uh, we see uh, he is in great peace so the master smiled and the master along with these two excuse me these two disciples uh he goes to the third disciple and then he asks the disciple bows down to the master and uh, first of all he extends his gratitude by saying master thank you very much for assigning this task of killing a pigeon uh, he says uh, i've been to various places i've been here and there uh, i thought let me get out of the village and get into certain place where no one is observing me uh, and then i went into you know some some places which are very dark places near the mountains and then uh it was a perfect place where i saw there are not even an insect not even an insect so then i took out the knife uh then i i wanted to kill the pigeon then i saw my eyes were open so i saw i am looking at the pigeon and the condition was no one should come to know that you are killing the pigeon so then i closed my eyes and then i was about to cut the pigeon but then something within me was aware this knowingness was knowing that i am killing the pigeon that's that's the point self awareness is very important you now weapon uh uh which you need to have in your arsenal of awakening spiritual awakening it's a very important weapon in fact it's it's the abc of spiritual journey for example i'm uh, having this and uh, there are two ways to have it one is just mechanical way just i'm just having it mm. wow delicious and the another way is that i'm aware that i'm having it right 
Now you are listening to me. There are two ways. One way is very mechanical, you know, you are just listening to me and maybe you are filtering my message through your certain parameters and you are judging good, bad, right, wrong, why and so on and so forth. And another way is that you are aware that you are aware, you are aware that you are listening and then you will realize in that awareness of being aware, your filters you now will, will, will thin, you will, will come out of that. So, uh, uh, on the cover page of my book, Tonic for a Great Life, which was released and launched in 2012, I believe, uh, I could mention that when, when mind is free from every ism, I-S-M, every ism, then it becomes pure prison. So, uh, self-awareness is the light. It's the basic of basics when it comes to spiritual journey. Uh, if at all there is any kind of liberation, moksha, then I would say, uh, it's my, again, my perspective, it's my understanding. If I could liberate my brain, which is beautiful design, divine design, if I liberate my brain from the clutches of my ego, then it's a wonderful tool. Oh my goodness. Now, over a period of years, thousands of years, the brain which I got from my ancestors, the ancestors and the ancestors, I don't know the genesis of it. So, irrespective of the genesis, wonderful memories, the biological memories, and it is actually cerebral evolution that I, I can think, I can analyze, I can sense, I can have certain intuition, I can connect the dots, amazing. However, this beautiful brain gets hijacked by the ego and the conditionings, then it, it, you know, it's crippled, then it loses its, its, its capacity, its, its full potential. And so is with the body. A body you know, in itself, divine has given amazing amazing ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, healing capacity. But somewhere, you know, it has been so much adulterated, overindulgence, you know, when it comes to the diet and the lifestyle. It has lost its own intelligence. So, we have to give liberation to the body and the brain. Now the question comes, you know, who wants to give liberation? <laughs> That's the question. So maybe at, at this given point of time, maybe you know, a consciousness coupled or conditioned with certain desires, certain ambitions. So uh, that's what it is. But you know, uh, the beauty of this, this guard or the watchdog I was mentioning, that is you know, self-awareness, being witness, being an observer, being a sakshi, then... Uh, the instrument itself gets cleaned, the instrument I'm talking about, the consciousness. And then it becomes your nature because actually it's your nature. And in that nature you will see compassion, you know, again your quality, you know, uh, bliss is your quality. Yeah. So I don't want to get into the details, but uh, here I would like to uh, more... Uh, highlight on the self-awareness and you can further augment it. I was talking about being aware towards your body moments, that is, that is one. Second, being aware towards your thoughts, you just observe your thoughts, <clears throat> don't condemn, don't suppress. Just, just see that's like a, like, a, like a movie screen, it, it's coming, it's going. And then you will experience, allow me to quote here, that you will experience, the more you observe, the density of thoughts, the traffic of thoughts will, 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 will become thin. And third, one, body, second, thoughts, third, emotions. Emotions are very deep. Our identification, uh, our instance, our pure consciousness identification with the emotions is very deep, very deep indeed. Wide. All kinds of emotions. So observe. Then you will realize the observer is the observed. 
<laughs> to quote unquote my guru jiddu krishna murti i am so grateful to all these gurus in fact the the story of pigeon i had heard from osho approximately 25 years ago when i was in uh, uh, from his audio talks and when i was in osho commune pune a wonderful wonderful time i had i'm grateful to all my friends who actually uh, introduced me to this this teaching yeah koti koti pranam if if at all i'm little good i'm just because of my my masters because of my great friends because of my well wishers so once you do that then slowly we'll come to know that observer is the observed what i mean by the observer is the observed is the instrument through which you are observing you will see that and what you are observing is same there is no duality so i will not get much into it because uh, my my intent is you need to first understand self awareness being aware that you are aware once you practice then maybe then you will decode the observer is the observed i will not talk about it but just since i have touched this so i will say everything is an image and observer is again an image you know it's it's a heap of image the memories and then you know it looks at certain images sabhava hawai so when it realizes everything is an image and the so called observer that egoic observer false observer not the pure consciousness then you know it it and whatever it thinks it the same and there is sudden clash of thunder and everything collapses <laughs> नहीं आगे नहीं बताऊंगा मैं आगे आप शुड लेट लेट बी योर जर्नी 